بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلم الحكيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to lesson number six of the video series Arabic Grammar for Understanding the Quran. Now, I know the past few lessons have been quite long, so I've intentionally decided to shorten this lesson, and this will give us all a chance, hopefully, to catch our breath and to do some revision if necessary. Here are the contents for today's lesson. In lesson number five, we covered verb forms two, three, four, and five. Today we'll be finishing up our discussion of the awzan by looking at verb forms 6, 7, 8, and 10. Afterwards, we'll be talking about the Arabic dual, the muthanna. We'll be learning the Arabic dual pronouns as well as the Arabic uh, dual verb conjugations. And finally, we'll close with a quick review of verbs. Verb form number 6. The pattern for verb form number 6 is تفاعل يتفاعل التفاعل تفاعل يتفاعل التفاعل What additions do we have? We have a تاء fixed to the very front and we also have an ألف attached to the first root letter so that gives us an elongation and this looks basically like verb form number 3 فاعل except with the ta in front. So verb form number six adds reciprocity or mutual exchange to the form three meaning. Tafa'ala. An example would be if we have the verb awana, form three verb awana, which means to help. Ta'awana in form six. Ta'awana yata'awanu ta'awun would mean to help each other. Or to cooperate. So the the mustar ta'awun means cooperation. Now keep in mind these these descriptions of verb form meanings are not absolute rules. So they're not hard and fast requirements. They're basically guidelines and principles. So sometimes they may apply. Sometimes they won't apply. It really depends on the verb itself. Here are some examples of form six verbs found in the Quran. تبارك يتبارك التبارك to be blessed or praised تساءل يتساءل التساؤل to ask one another so here we have the meaning of exchange and reciprocity تعارف يتعارف التعارف to get to know one another or each other so again when we're learning these verb forms, we want to train ourselves to listen to the unique characteristics of each verb. So for form 6, that would be listening for that ta and listening for that elongation in the middle of the verb itself. تفاعل يتفاعل التفاعل. Let's go through the conjugation of one form 6 verb with the root letters ب, دال, and لام. That would give us tabadala, which means to exchange mutually. Tafa'ala tabadala. Tafa'alu tabadalu. Tafa'alat tabadalat. Tafa'alna tabadalna. Tafa'alta tabadalta. تفاعلتم تبادلتم تفاعلتي تبادلتي تفاعلتن تبادلتن تفاعلت تبادلت تفاعلنا تبادلنا same verb in the present tense يتفاعل يتبادل يتفاعلون يتبادلون تتفاعل تتبادل يتفاعلن 
يتبادلن تتفاعل تتبادل تتفاعلون تتبادلون تتفاعلين تتبادلين تتفاعلن تتبادلن أتفاعل أتبادل نتفاعل نتبادل So one thing you'll notice is that as the form number increases, as we move towards form 10, the verb becomes increasingly complex. So we're adding more features. And in general, the meaning of the verb also gains complexity. Here are some examples of form 6 verbs found in the context of ayat from the Quran. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا تَعَارَفُوا To get to know each other. Example of Form 6 verb. تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْفُرْقَانَ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ The verb تَبَارَكَ فِي جَنَّاتِ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ Form 6. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَىٰ الْبِرِّ وَتَقْوَى تَعَاوَنُوا Let's move on now to form 7. The form 7 pattern in fa'ala yanfa'ilu al-infi'al in fa'ala yanfa'ilu al-infi'al The unique characteristic of form 7 is that number 1 we've added a hamza to the front of the past and the verbal noun so we have a hamza to the wasl in fa'ala in fi'al and also we've added a characteristic noon before the first root letter so in all three cases in the madli the mudari and the masr we have a noon in fa'ala yan fa'ilu al in fi'al so an easy way to remember form 7 is to use a certain shortcut in fa'ala has the noon sound that corresponds to the n sound in form 7 in fa'ala form 7 so this helps you remember and this is actually a very useful way for us to distinguish between form 7 and form 8 it's easy to confuse those two there's another shortcut for form 8 which we will discuss uh, later on form 7 usually contains the passive meaning to be something so an example would be the form 1 verb which means to cut off or to chop off if we change that to form 7, we get in which means to be cut off or to be severed. Let's look at some examples of form 7 verbs from the Quran. In which means to be turned or to return. In which means to disperse or to be scattered. In bajasa yambajisu al imbijas, which means to gush forth. Past tense conjugation using the verb in qalaba, we have in fa'ala in qalaba, in fa'alu in qalabu, in fa'alat in qalabat, in fa'alna in qalabna, in fa'alta. In qalabta, in fa'altum, in qalabtum, in fa'alti, in qalabti, in fa'altunna, in qalabtunna, in fa'altu, in qalabtu, in fa'alna, in qalabna. Present tense, yan fa'ilu, yan qalibu, yan fa'iluna, yan qalibuna, tan fa'ilu, tan qalibu, yan fa'ilna, yan qalibna, tan fa'ilu, tan qalibu, tan fa'iluna, tan qalibuna, tan fa'ilina, tan qalibina. 
tanqalibna anfa'ilu anqalibu nanfa'ilu nanqalibu Some form seven verbs taken from the Quran. وَإِذَا انْقَلَبُوا إِلَىٰ أَحْلِهِمُ انْقَلَبُوا فَكِهِينَ The verb in قَلَبَ فَانْبَجَسَتْ مِنْهُ ثْنَةَ عَشْرَةَ عَيْنَ So we have the verb إِنْبَجَسَ فَانْبَجَسَتْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكْ إِنْ فَضَّ يَنْ فَضُّ Another form seven verb. Moving on to form 8. The form 8 pattern. If ta'ala yafta'ilu al-ifti'al. If ta'ala yafta'ilu al-ifti'al. Now similar to form 7, we've added a hamza. Hamza al-wasl. In the very front of the past tense and the verbal noun. So for the maldi and the masdar, we have a hamza in the very front if ta'ala al ifti'al what we've also done is we've added a characteristic ta between the first two root letters so smack in the middle of the verb we find a ta if ta'ala yafta'ilu al ifti'al so this is the the more important of the two characteristics because we find it in the mudari as well it's basically present in all three cases an easy way for us to remember form 8 is that this ta Gives us a t, t sound, if ta'ala, and that corresponds to the T sound in English, form 8. If ta'ala, form 8. So for form 7, we have in fa'ala. For form 8, we have if ta'ala. So the N and noon and the ta and T sounds are easy, way, easy ways for us to remember form 7 and form 8. Just a uh, coincidental correspondence in the English and Arabic phonetics. Uh, now let's look at some examples of form 8 verbs found in the Quran. <inaudible> which means to follow or to obey. <inaudible> to take. <inaudible> to be guided. <inaudible> to be on guard. Or in the context of uh, the Quran and Islam, to be conscious of and to fear Allah. So you'll notice that some of these verbs take a shadda on top of the ta, like ittaba'a, ittakhadha, ittaqa, and that's because of the root letters. So for ittaba'a, we have ta, ba, and ayn. So ta is actually one of the root letters, the radicals. Uh, for ittakhadha, one of the radicals is hamza. Hamza, kha, and the. And the ittaqa, we have a wa, actually, a wa, qaf, and a ya. So when you have cases where the radicals, uh, the first radical of the verb is a ta, or a hamza, or a wa, uh, we have to use a shadda in form 8. We have to use a shadda. This is a transformation dictated by phonetics. So we won't go into the details, but. What you want to do is pay attention for a shadda that comes in the front of the verb. A shadda on top of a ta. That is a telltale sign of a form 8 verb. Conjugation practice using the verb ikhtalafa, which means to defer. Ifta'ala ikhtalafa. Ifta'alu ikhtalafu. Ifta'alat ikhtalafat. Ifta'alna ikhtalafta Ifta'alta ikhtalafta Ifta'altum ikhtalaftum Ifta'alti ikhtalafti Ifta'altunna ikhtalaftunna Ifta'altu ikhtalaftu Ifta'alna ikhtalafna Present tense. Yafta'ilu yakhtalifu. Yafta'iluna yakhtalifuna. Tafta'ilu takhtalifu. Yafta'ilna yakhtalifna. Tafta'ilu takhtalifu. Tafta'iluna 
تختلفون تفتعلين تختلفين تفتعلن تختلفن أفتعل أختلف نفتعل نختلف So again, pay attention to the characteristic تا found in the middle of the verb between the first and the second radicals. That تا is the main characteristic of the form 8 verb. So form 8 is fairly common in the Quran. Unlike forms 6 and 7, those tend to be a bit more rare. But form 8 you find all over the place. وَيَشْتَرُونَ بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا The verb اشترى يشتري It's a form 8 verb. اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله Part of the last ayah of Ali Imran as a command form. This is a form 8 verb. إِنْ يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا ظَنَّ وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَخْرُصُونَ يَتَّبِعُونَ To follow. Form 8 verb. اِتَّبَعَ يَتَّبِعُ الْإِتِبَاعَ and from Surah Yunus, فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا افْتَرَى Which means to invent or to fabricate. Also a Form 8 verb. So again, you want to look for a ta in the middle of the verb, such as an in اِخْتَلَفَ or in اِجْتَمَعَ Or you're looking for a ta with a shadda on top, like in يَتَّبِعُونَ وَاتَّقَى These are usually indications of Form 8 verb. So now for form 10, the last and final form. Form 10 has a much longer and complex form structure. We have istafa'ala yastaf'ilu al-istifa'al. Istafa'ala yastaf'ilu al-istifa'al. We've added quite a few things. Number one, we've placed the hamza in the front of the past and the verbal noun, just like we did for forms 7 and 8. Istafa'ala and istifa'al. Moreover, we've added a seen and a ta before the first root letter. So we have istafa'ala. Hamza, seen, ta. Yastaf'ilu, seen, and ta. Wal istifa'al. Hamza, seen, and ta. So in the past tense, in the Maldi, we have three things going on. Hamza, seen, and ta before the radicals show up later on. Uh, form 10 has a few different abstract meanings number one to seek or to request to do the form one meaning to seek or to request so an example would be istakhara yastakhiru al istikhara istakhara means to seek khair to seek goodness so the prayer al istikhara salat al istikhara is a prayer that we perform when we are seeking Khayr from Allah. When we're seeking divine guidance before we make big, big decisions in our life. Another possible meaning of Form 10 is to consider or to deem. To consider someone to have Form 1, the qualities of the Form 1 verb. Some examples of Form 10 verbs. This is a typo. Form 10 verbs found in the Quran. Ista'jala yasta'jilu al istajal. Istajala yastajilu al istajal, which means to seek to hasten. The form one verb means to hasten. Put in form ten, istajala means to seek to hasten. Istalfara yastalfiru al istilfar, a very common verb, which means to seek forgiveness. And then we have istakbara yastakbiru al istikbar, to be proud or to be arrogant. Past tense conjugation for form 10 using the root letters غين, فا, and را استغفرا which means to seek forgiveness we have استفعل استغفرا استفعلوا استغفروا استفعلت استغفرت استفعدنا استغفرنا استفعلت استغفرت استفعلتم استغفرتم استفعلتي استغفرتي استفعلتن استغفرتن استفعلت استغفرت استفعلنا استغفرنا 
So you'll notice that these verbs are very long. There's a lot of stuff going on in there in Form 10. Okay, it gets even longer here for the present tense. يستفعلو يستغفرو يستفعلونا يستغفرونا تستفعلو تستغفرو يستفعلنا يستغفرنا تستفعلو تستغفرو تستفعلونا تستغفرون تستفعلين تستغفرين تستفعلنا تستغفرنا أستفعل أستغفر نستفعل نستغفر So in form 10, we're listening for and paying attention to the scene and the ta, those extra additions in the verb. Form 10 verbs found in the Quran. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين in Surah Al-Fatiha. نستعين from the verb استعانة. And this means to seek help. To seek help. فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ فَلَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةٌ وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ We have two instances of the form 10 verb. يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ and يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ ثُمَّ أَفِيضُوا مِنْ حَيْثُ أَفَاضَ النَّاسُ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهِ اسْتَغْفِرَ from 10. And finally, يَسْتَغْفُونَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يَسْتَغْفُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ The verb يَسْتَغْفُونَ So this officially concludes our discussion of the Awzan patterns, the verb forms and patterns. Here is a summary chart for all the different forms that we've covered. We've covered nine of the major forms. You'll notice that form nine is actually missing, so we jump from eight to ten. We've skipped out on form nine, and that's because form nine is rarely used. It's rarely used in in the media, in books. It's also not very common in the Quran. It shows up around ten times in the entire Quran, so I chose not to cover it. I cannot emphasize enough how important and how crucial it is for you to know these verb forms by heart. The maldi, the mustar, the maldi, the mudari, and the mustar as a set for each form. The awzan, this chart, allows you to conjugate verbs. It allows you to use the Hans Ver dictionary to look up different words. It allows you to predict the meanings. It allows you to make derivations like ism fa'il, ism maf'ul, etc., etc. So try your very best to commit these to memory. And like I mentioned in the previous lesson, the best two strategies are number one, to repeat, to repeat across like this. Form five, tafa'ala yatafa'alu atafa'ul. And to emphasize those unique sounds to each verb. So in form five, that would be the shadda. That would be the shadda. In form six, that would be the ta and the elongation. Right? So form five and six, if you slur them, Tafa'ala, tafa'ala, they sound really close. So what you want to do is you want to elongate that alif in form six. Tafa'ala versus tafa'ala. And number two, to use examples. Okay, so look at examples of each of the forms. Inshallah, these two strategies will help you, help you memorize this chart. Okay, it's now time for us to switch gears and to move on to topic number two, al muthanna, al muthanna, the dual. So here we have our pronoun chart. Again, the pronouns are organized by person, number, and gender. We've seen this a few times in the past. We'll be filling in the middle column for the dual pronouns. So we have huma, huma, for the masculine third person dual pronoun. So this is used when you're referring to two individuals in the third person. So if you see two men walking down the street and you want to talk about them, you would use the pronoun huma, huma yathabani fishadir. That is actually the same pronoun we use for the feminine counterpart, feminine third person dual. So if you see two women walking down the street, you would also refer to them as huma, huma. And then the pronouns for the second person, masculine and feminine, are also identical. We have antuma. So we have anta, antuma, antum. Anti, antuma, antunna. So antuma, 
would be used when you are addressing, directly addressing, two individuals, both in the masculine and in the feminine. Now, how do we distinguish between the genders if the pronouns are the same, if they are both huma and both entuma? The answer is based on context. So context will give you the clues and indications uh, to tell us what gender is being used. So huma again means they too, and antuma means you too. Let's now take a look at the verb conjugations for the dual. We'll be starting out with el maldi, the past tense. So here we have huwa fa'ala, hum fa'alu. In the middle for the dual, we have huma ya fa'ala, huma fa'ala. So it's basically the same as the huwa except we've added an alif so we just make that lam a little bit longer huma fa'ala an example would be huwa dhahaba huma dhahaba or huwa qatala huma qatala in the hiya or in the, sorry in the feminine form we have hiya fa'alat huma fa'alata huma fa'alata so what we've done here is we've removed the sukun, we've added fatha, and then we've also added an elongation, a long alif to the end. Huma fa'alata, hiya dhahabat, huma dhahabata, or hiya qalat, huma qalata. On to the second person verbs in the maldi. We have anta fa'alta, antuma fa'altuma, fa'altuma. And that's also the same case with the feminine second person. Anti fa'alti, antuma fa'altuma. So you'll notice that for the second person, the endings of the past tense verbs correspond to the pronouns. Anta fa'alta, antuma fa'altuma, antum fa'altum, anti fa'alti, antuma fa'altuma, antunna fa'altunna. So fa'altuma is the same for both genders. An example would be anta the habta antuma the habtuma the habtuma. As for the present tense, al fi' mudari al marfu' we have huwa yafalu huma yafalani yafalani. For the feminine version, we have hiya tafalu huma tafalani tafalani. So Besides the front, we have a ya for the huwa and a ta for the hiya. We also have a lani. We've added this to the end of the verb. Huma yaf'alani or huma taf'alani. For the second person dual pronouns, anta taf'alu, antuma taf'alani. And this is also the same, same verb that we would use in the feminine case antuma taf'alani so you'll notice that the verb taf'alani is repeated a total of three times in our chart we have huma taf'alani third person feminine dual as well as antuma taf'alani for the second person dual masculine and feminine so this comes up a total of three times and again context would indicate which situation which case we are referring to so the dual al-muthanna isn't very common in the Quran. You're not going to find it in too many places. But it does make a few significant appearances in some surahs. So for example, in the stories about Musa and Harun, you'll find the dual because we're talking about two individuals. Or in the story of Musa and Khidr in Surah Al-Kahf, you'll find al-muthanna. And another case is also in Surah Al-Kahf, the story about the owner of the two gardens. So in that story, you'll find the Muthanna. And also in other scattered places in the Quran. So when you do hear the dual, it's impossible to miss, right? Because you have some characteristic features of the dual that stand out. So one of those features is the alif at the end there's an alif so the dual pronouns and the dual verbs all have an alif at the end 
when reading the Quran or listening to its recitation, pay attention for that alif. Be on the lookout for it. So, fa'ala, an extension, elongation at the end. Fa'alata, fa'altuma, antuma, taf'alani, yaf'alani, and huma. There's a shared alif in all these cases. What are the dual verb case endings in the present tense? The dual verbs present tense case ending markers are exactly the same as those markers for verbs conjugated for enti, entum, and hum. So as a reminder, that marker for the morfur will be thubut and nun, the presence of the nun. And the marker for the mansub and the majzum will be hadth and nun, dropping the nun. So all five of these verbs i.e. those verbs conjugated for hum, entum, enti, humma, and entuma, all five of them are collectively called al-af'al al-khamsa, al-af'al al-khamsa, because of their shared markers. And al-af'al al-khamsa, this phrase literally means the five verbs. So their case endings all revolve around the noon, the presence of the noon in the marfu' and the absence or elimination of the noon in the majzum and the mansub. So let's go through the case endings in a little bit more detail in this slide. On the far right, we have the marfu' yaf'aluna, taf'aluna, and taf'alina. We've seen this in lesson number five. Now we can add the two dual verbs, yaf'alani and taf'alani. So that gives us a total of five verbs. And all five have thubut and noon, the presence of the noon, as the marfu' marker. Now this noon can be dropped in the mansub and the majzum. So if we add a nalsib such as an or la mata'alil, we have an yaf'alu li yaf'alu, an taf'alu li taf'alu, an taf'ali li taf'ali. What happens when we add the nalsib in front of the dual verb? We get an yaf'ala, we drop the noon, we drop the noon, li yaf'ala, same case for taf'alani, an taf'ala. And in the majzum, when we add a jazim, okay, so the marker for the mansub is dropping the noon, dropping the noon, and then in the majzum, we get lam yaf'alu li yaf'alu, same case, we've dropped the noon, hat the noon, lam taf'alu li taf'alu, lam taf'ali li taf'ali, so this is lam or lam al amr. Same case happens to our dual verbs, lam yaf'ala li yaf'ala, or lam taf'ala li taf'ala, dropping the noon. So hopefully this slide clarifies the case ending markers for al-af'al al-khamsa. Again, to review, in the marfu' we have the presence of the noon, that is the marker, but in the mansub and the majzum we have to drop the noon. Let's now take a look at some examples of al-muthanna found in the Quran. Example number one: فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ أَن يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّهُمَا وَيَسْتَخْرِجَ كَنْزَهُمَا. We have two instances of the dual in the mansub, al-fi'l mudari al-mansub. Uh, the reason is we have the an, so we have yablugha in the mafur. This would be yablughani, and then we have yastakhrija. In the marfu, this would be yastakhrijani. And by the way, this is a form 10 verb. So in both cases, we have to drop the noon. We have hath and noon because of the nalsib an. Example number two. Yuridani ay yukhrijakum min ardikum. We have the verb yuridani, form four. And we hear that alif, yuridani, that elongation. Uh, this is al-fi'r mudari al marfu' It's the default case because there are no special factors around. And the marker would therefore be thubut and noon, presence of the noon. This is to kavibani, to kavibani, conjugated for antuma, you too. The case is marfu' and the marker is thubut and noon. So why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using the muthanna in this case? It's because Allah is addressing both men and jinn. 
men and jinn. So two entities are being addressed by this question. And that's why the dual is used. To kathibani. Next example. So here we have two instances of al muthanna in the past tense. We have balagha and nasiya. These are conjugated for huma in the masculine form. And these are in the maldi, so we don't have a marker because the maldi is mabni, it's fixed. We have qalata. This is conjugated for huma, but the feminine version. The feminine version. So we have qalata again in the maldi, no marker because it is mabniya. In the last example, yuridani ayyukhrijakum min ardikum. This is a repeat of a previous ayah. So now we are focusing on the second dual verb, yukhrija, yukhrija. This is in the mansub case, al fi'r mudar al mansub, because of the nalsib an, an yukhrijakum, which means we have to drop the noon. So the marker is hadf an noon. So that concludes our discussion of al muthanna, the Arabic dual. Here is a quick review. I'll be presenting two diagrams or two uh, schematics, two charts to summarize what we've covered in this lesson and the past lesson uh, regarding markers and present tense cases. So again, this is a, is a chart we've seen in lesson number five, except we've updated part of it. So now we have all the pronouns accounted for. On the top, we have verbs conjugated for huwa, hiya, anta, ana, nahnu. The markers are our basic short vowels, alamma for the marfur, fatha for the mansub, and sukun for the majzum. On the bottom, we have the al-fa'al al-khamsa, the five verbs. Those are the ones conjugated for hum, antum, anti, huma, and antuma. Al-fa'al al-khamsa, take the presence of the noon, thubut al-noon, as the marfur marker, and harth al-noon, dropping of the noon, for the mansub and the majzum. So their markers revolve around the presence or the absence of the noon. As for the second diagram, I want to introduce briefly what I call the factor case marker system. Factor case marker. It's a three-part system which I find very logical, accurate, and intuitive. So this is a very straightforward approach in grammatical analysis. What you're doing is you're asking yourself three questions. Number one, what is the factor? Number two, what is the case? Number three, what is the marker? Factor case marker in that exact order. So a lot of students like to jump around when they're doing air arab. They like to go from the marker to the factor to the case, or the case to the factor to the marker, all sorts of stuff. And they invent their own reasonings and logic. And that is why oftentimes they have to resort to guesswork, okay? Because there's no methodology. Here I present a very straightforward methodology, factor, case, marker. If you follow the sequence and flow in that direction, you won't go wrong. So when we have no factors present, the case is the marfu', which means we have to use either a dhamma or a noon as the marker. So no factor, which means we have to use the marfu' case, which means we have to use a dhamma or a noon as the marker. If the factor is a nalsib, such as la ta'alil and an, that means we have to use the mansub case, which then means we have to drop the noon or we use a fatha. And finally, if we see a jazim like lam al amr or lam, that means we have to use the majzum case in the present tense, which further means we have to drop the noon or use the sukun. So hopefully this schematic makes intuitive sense and hopefully you find this helpful. This brings us to the end of lesson number six. Here's a quick review. We learn verb forms number six, seven, eight, and ten. Each form again consists of a fixed, past, present, and verbal noun pattern. So here's a chart summarizing the new verb forms that we just discussed. We also learned that the Arabic dual pronouns are huma and antuma, and we learned their present and past tense verb conjugations. And finally, we learned that the five verbs that take the following markers are called al-fa'al al-khamsa. 
So those are the verbs conjugated for whom, entum, enti, huma, and entuma. Their shared markers revolve around the noon in the marfu' that is thubut and noon, the presence of the noon. And in the mansub and the majzum, the marker will be hath and noon, dropping the noon. Thank you for watching lesson number six. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.